The Resound Lynx is the world's first made for infant hearing aid, hands-on, a hearing aid isn't something I'd normally expect to try out while working for CNET, but in fairness, the Resound Lynx from GN Resound isn't your standard hearing aid. Also, it's Hearing Awareness Week here in Australia, so it all sort of makes sense. First making the news late last year, the Lynx is the world's first made-for-iPhone hearing aid, developed in partnership between Apple and the Danish company Resound. The hearing aid will pair with an iPhone or iPad or iPod, and allow users to access detailed controls, as well as functioning a bit like a pair of Bluetooth headphones. The concept is apparently designed to help reduce the stigma around hearing aids, making the Lynx feel more like a phone accessory than a medical prosthetic. But a medical prosthetic it is, so before I can try the Lynx, I need to get my hearing tested. Russell Abdeshu, audiologist with Nanosecond Audiology does the testing for me. She uncovers something I'd long suspected, I do have some hearing issues. Specifically, I have mild sensor and neural hearing loss at the 3-4 kHz range occurring bilaterally. It seems that I have an almost textbook, 4 kHz knot where my hearing drops at those specific sounds. It's commonly caused by exposure to loud noises, which may mean one concert too many in my youth, or, more honestly, one bad goth club too many. It's not a big problem as hearing loss goes but I'm assured that I will notice some benefits from the hearing aid and my results are emailed off so my links can be programmed for me to pick up at the Sydney Apple store that evening. The Lynx uses Bluetooth to pair with iOS devices and also to help lower the power consumption. The current compatibility list is iPhone 5 seconds, iPhone 5C, iPhone 5, iPad Air, iPad 4th generation, iPad Mini with Retina display, iPad Mini, and iPod Touch 5th generation, with all devices needing to run iOS 7. X or later. At the Apple Store a Eaton Hogan from Resound sets me up with the Lynx. A little bizarrely, he's joined by Todd Hunter from classic Australian rock band Dragon, who's a bit of a spokesperson for the device. The hearing aids themselves are as small as would be expected and pretty much invisible once they're in. The over-the-ear portion is small enough that there's no problem getting my glasses on over the top. Apart from a slight weirdness to the way everything sounds, I could easily forget that I'm wearing them. Hogan says that the weirdness is natural. There is a period of adjustment for any hearing aid as the senses get used to the new input. I take some time to explore the app and it's this that provides the point of difference for the links. There are some standard controls, such as the ability to adjust the volume, along with the treble and bass. The adjustments can be made to the hearing aids either as a pair or individually. But there's also a lot more. You can add different programs to the app that will adjust the links for optimal use in certain situations, such as driving or in a restaurant. You can then associate those programs with actual locations. So, for example, when you're in your favorite restaurant, the Resound app notes your GPS location and automatically switches to the restaurant program. That GPS connectivity can also be used to track your hearing aids almost identically to how you can track a lost phone. For when you can find the links but you know it's within Bluetooth range, the app can let you track it down using a directional finder. But obviously it's the sound connectivity that matters the most. The links will directly play sounds from your Apple device including any content audio, music, movies etc as well as phone calls, skip for sea time and the like. I try the music and it's a little reedy and tinny, but Todd Hunter breaks in at this point to assure me that with some adjustments to bass and treble, you can get decent sound. He also says it's particular good for sat-nav directions while driving. Hunter even uses his to get fold back direct from the mixing desk while in concert. Because of the Apple partnership, the Lynx has some impressive integration with iOS. A triple press of the iPhone's button at any time, even from lock screen, opens up an interface for basic sound adjustments on the hearing's aid as well as the option for a live sound.
In this mode, the hearing aids directly relay anything coming from the iPhone's mic. Hogan suggests that this is particularly good for lectures and talks where an iPhone could be placed on the lectern and someone wearing the links could get a clear sound even from the back of a noisy conference room. I and the short time I had the links in, it's hard to tell if my hearing was any better. Voices certainly seemed a little clearer, but the sheer level of control and options, as well as the comfort of the hearing aids themselves, was impressive. One possible concern would be battery life. However, the Lynx uses Bluetooth LA, but it's a still a big drain on the battery, which is the standard hearing aid size 312. Hogan says that the normal battery life is about a 7 to 10 days, but that the Bluetooth functions can drop that to just 4 days. There's also the price. Rizal don't like to discuss the cost saying that the company is a wholesaler and it's up to suppliers to set price. Speaking to the people back at Nanosecond Audiology, they also don't want to give exact pricing, but they do say that in general a job of the line hearing aid, such as the Resound Lynx can run anywhere from $9,000 to $13,000, £5,437 to £7,853, $9,661 to $13,955. Back in November 2013 when my colleague Derek Ayer reported on the links the estimated U.S. price was $3,000, £1,817, $3,220. So, definably not a cheap option, but the Czech savvy and, obviously, Apple fans among the hearing impaired might find that the extra features and additional level of control should be well worth the cost.